Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So far, we looked at the mathematical concepts that were available in some of the most ancient texts, so Vedas and Sulva Sutras. So, in the next three to four talks, we will be focusing our attention on a single text called Aryabhatiya of Aryabhata. So, the Aryabhata so was in the later part of the 5th century and his text Aryabhatiya is one of the most seminal texts on Indian astronomy and mathematics. So, we will start with the period of Aryabhata and then we will have a brief description on the work Aryabhatiya. Aryabhatiya as I was mentioning, so while discussing this decimal place value system has been composed in a very test style and therefore, without commentary it will be extremely difficult for us to understand the contents. So, the earliest commentary that is available for us is one by Bhaskara. So, Bhaskara lived in the early part of 7th century and it is a very profound commentary on Aryabhatiya. We will see a brief description of where Bhaskara lived and what was his period and then we will move on to the text per se. So, Aryabhata first introduces uh, the notational places, then he starts discover, describing about uh, the fundamental operations square, squaring, finding out the square root, cube root and so on, then he moves on to various other topics. The text Aryabhatiya as such is composed in four parts, we will discuss all that in great detail. But before I move on to that, I just wanted to say about the very name Aryabhata. So, Aryasya Bhata Aryabhata. So, this is how one can derive the word Aryabhata. So, Bhata normally means a soldier, a guardian and so on. So, the term Arya refers to a noble person. In fact, a very interesting definition has been presented in one of the text called Shabda Kalpadruma. So, that I have noted down Kartavya Macharan Kamam Akartavya Manacharan Tishthati Prakrita Achare Sayeva Arya Smrutaha. This is a very beautiful definition. So, Kartavya Macharan, the one who performs what is to be performed by him. So, this is not sufficient and he also puts it in the negative form. So, this is what is called Anvaya Vitireka, Akartavya Manacharan, I will do all things which I have to be done, but I will also engage myself in nefarious activities that is not acceptable. And therefore, Akartavya Manacharan, Tishthati Prakrita Achare, Prakrita Achare means that which is acceptable in the society at that particular point of time, okay, the one who Sayeva Arya Smrtaha. So, this Arya Bhatta can be derived in the two ways. So, the one who protects it, so the one who safeguards and so on and so forth. Anyway, so Aryasya Bhattaha, Arya Bhattaha. So, this is how the term can be derived and uh, the very name of the text is based on the name of the author. So, sometimes it just happens the text could be completely different. Abhijnana Shakuntalam has nothing to do with Kalidasa. So, here it is called Aryabhatiyam. So, that which belongs to Aryabhata or that which has been composed by Aryabhata. So, that is why it is called Aryabhatiyam. The name Aryabhata appears twice in the text. So, which is not quite common in many of these texts in the Indian literature, but here right at the beginning of Gitika Pada, which is the first section. So, he mentions his name and again once more in the next section called Ganita Pada. The time of Aryabhata is also 
pretty clear to us. So, there is no ambiguity because there is a verse in the third section Kala Kriya Pada. The go verse goes like this Sashtyabdhanam Shashtir Yada Vyatitaha Trayascha Yuga Padaha Tridhika Vimshati Rabdaha Tadeha Mama Janmano Titaha. Tridhika Vimshati, 3 is 3, Vimshati is 20, Tridhika Vimshati is 23. So, Aryabhada says, I was 23 years old at a certain point of time. So, and that is mentioned in the first part of the sloka. So, Shashtyabdhanam Shashti, Shashti is 60, Shashtyabdhanam Shashti 60 times 60. So, when 3600 years of the Kali has elapsed, so I was 23 years old. So, when we go back and then find out, so what was the beginning of Kali? So, it just uh, happens that it is 499 AD. So, people uh, are of the opinion that this verse has been composed in Aryabhatiyam and therefore, Aryabhata was 23 years old when he composed this work. So, this actually clearly tells that Aryabhata was born in 476 AD. Coming to Aryabhatiya, as I was mentioning, so this is the uh, text which is very clearly datable and it was composed in 499 and uh, as far as we know this is the earliest datable text that is available in full form for us. So, there have been earlier works in fact, Aryabhata himself towards the end of the work he says Sadasajnana samudrat samudhritam devata prasadena sajnanottama ratnam maya nimagnam swabhati nava. He says I entered into the ocean of knowledge with the intellect as boat and I lifted up the gems. So, which means I mean he is trying to point out that there has been earlier literature. So, from which he has culled out certain important things and presented in this work. So, this Aryabhatiya is uh, available for us in complete form and uh, the earlier works which were available for Aryabhata have been sort of compiled by Varahamihira in his text called Pancha Siddhantika. So, this is a little later more or less contemporary. So, this systematically discusses uh, the procedures for uh, planetary computations and uh, it has been composed in a very cryptic style and therefore, some people refer it as Aryabhata Sutra. Though it is in the form of verses, it is in the form of Arya meter. So, the text is many times referred to as Sutra itself and there are uh, four padas as I said four sections. So, Geetika pada contains 13 verses, Ganita pada 33 verses, Kalakriya pada 25, Gola pada 50 verses. In all we find 121 verses composed in Arya meter which consists of the text Arya Bhatiya. And in fact, yesterday you might have uh, heard Professor Srinivas mentioning that uh, so it is also called as Arya Ashtasati, Ashtasati means 108. So, this 108, so if you just drop out this 13 verses, so it just happens to be 108. So, we will uh, see it little more in greater detail later. Why this 108? So, to give you an idea of what are the contents of these four chapters, so Geetika Pada, so basically he lays out all the parameters that are essential for doing astronomical computations in the to be described in the later part of the work. Then Ganita Pada as the name itself implies discusses all the necessary mathematics that is required for doing this planetary computation. Starts with square, square root, cube, cube root and then it moves on to discuss. So, solution for indeterminate equations of the first order and which is called the Kuttaka problem which will be discussed at great length uh, by Professor Sriram and also myself little later. In Kalakriya Pada, we primarily find the geometrical picture which is implied by the computational procedure. It has been discussed in great detail and in Gola Pada, there are a variety of topics which are discussed. So, it is in fact uh, almost occupies 50 percent, there are 50 verses in Gola Pada. So, it discusses various details regarding the shape of the earth, so the uh, source of light on planets, calculation of eclipses, visibility of planets and so on and so forth. So, these are the various topics which are discussed in Gola Pada. Before I proceed into the text Aryabhatiya, I will uh, say a couple of words 
on Bhaskara's commentary because I will be more or less dealing both of them together. So, I am not going to take up Bhaskara separately. So, we will uh, see a brief note on Bhaskara. Bhaskara has actually written three major uh, works. One is Aryabhatiya Bhashya as I was mentioning. The other two are sort of independent works, but Bhaskara describes them as Aryabhata Karma Nibandhana. Means, so it is primarily an exposition on what has been described by Aryabhata. That is how he describes. Those two works are called Lagu Bhaskariyam and Mahabhaskariyam. In fact, these three works put together throw a lot of light on the kind of mathematical knowledge as well as the astronomical theories which were present around that period. So, Bhaskara's time has been estimated to be 629 AD and his work actually displays a great amount of scholarship and it is really an intellectual feast to read his Bhashya. So, I had an occasion to go through in great detail in connection with this course. In fact, in one place he says Kalpade Rabda Nirodha Dayam Abda Rashi. So, he refers to a certain number and uh, you can take this as an exercise now. Yesterday we discussed Bhuta Sankhya, he gives in Bhuta Sankhya, you see Khag Nyadri Ramark Rasa Vasu Randhrendavaha. See, Kham in Sanskrit means Akasha, it refers to 0 and then Agni. So, I said Tretagni, it refers to number 3, Adri is hill, it refers to 7 and Ra, Rama, so 3 Ramas and therefore 3 and Arka is Aditya, sun 12, see and so on you can see this. So, based on the last 4 digits uh, in this number, so Shukla, of course this number, whole number uh, represents Kalpadehe Abda. So, we have a very large period called Kalpa, so which is found. So, Kalpa is 1000 times Mahayuga. So, Mahayuga itself is 43,20,000 years. So, based on some uh, uh, analysis, so it has been shown by Professor Shukla that uh, this corresponds to 629 AD. Bhaskara was just about uh, 140 years after Aryabhata, very close to the period of composition of Aryabhatiya. In fact, there are uh, references in this work as well as the work of Brahma Gupta that Aryabhata had many disciples. So, one of the most uh, famous one was Lata Deva. So, Bhaskara refers to him in various places and also Brahma Gupta refers to him. Okay, so, this much as an introduction. Now, we move on to the text Aryabhatiya itself. So, the first section Geetika Pada consists of uh, 13 verses as I was mentioning. So, verse 1 is invocatory verse and it goes like this Pranipatyaika manekam kam satyam devatam param brahma aryabhata strini gadati ganitam kalakriyam golam. Aryabhata ha strini gadati. So, we find a very clear statement where Aryabhata himself says Aryabhata ha gadati. Gadati means states. So, what does he state? So, Ganitam Kalakriyam Golam. This Geetika Pada, so which essentially presents numbers, certain parameters, so is considered to be out of the text in some sense. So, the details are present. So, the numbers which are required and the kind of uh, sign table, etcetera, are all essential for doing computation, but they need not be integrated with the text per se when we want to understand astronomy. So, it is in this sense, I mean uh, that it has been segregated out and uh, the last verse goes like this, Dasagitika sutra midam bhugraha charitam bhapanjare jnatva graha bhagana paribhramanan sayati bhitva param brahma. He says Dasagitika sutra midam. So, so, this is called Dasagitika. So, leaving out uh, the first verse and uh, the last verse and the kind of philosophy all that. He says, so once the person knows this, so Sayati Bhitva Param Brahma. So, it is a kind of Palashruti which has been stated here. But anyway, the point that I wanted to convey here was this. So, this Trini Gadati 
very clearly tells that the basic text of Aryabhatiya is leaving out Geetika Pada and just consists of 108 verses and there is also a Palashruti and in fact one finds another invocation at the beginning of uh, Ganita Pada. So Ganita Pada, see invocation basically marks the beginning of the text. So we find two invocations, so one is uh, completely uh, separated out and then again so in Ganita Pada you will find an invocation. So we have basically three parts of Aryabhatiya, Ganita, Kalakriya and Gola. What we are going to discuss here is only Ganita Pada. Okay. The Ganita Pada commences with this verse Brahma Kushashi Buddha Bhrugu Ravi Kuja Guru Kona Bhaganan Namaskritya Arya Bhattas Triha Nigadati Kusuma Pure Abhir Chitam Yanam. So again, Namaskritya basically offering my venerations. My venerations to what? Brahma Kushashi Buddha Bhrugu. You can easily guess. So these are the names of the planets. So Brahma, leave it out. Ku starts from Prithivi, Shashi refers to Moon, Bhrugu, Ravi, Kuja, Guru, Kona, then Bhaganan. So Bhagana here refers to the group of stars, Bhammi Stara as I mentioned yesterday. Bhagana is group of stars constellations. So I offer my venerations to all these celestial bodies and then I start uh, this work, Arya Bhattas Triha Nigadati. Nigadati means states states what kusuma pure abhyarchitam jnanam. So Aryabhata does not claim that uh, I am going to say completely everything out of my head. So it is not that. Kusuma pure abhyarchitam means highly revered. So all that he says is kusuma pure abhyarchitam. So the knowledge which was highly revered in a place called kusuma pura I am going to narrate here. Kusuma pure abhyarchitam jnanam. So commenting upon this word kusuma pura Bhaskara actually says Kusumapuram Pataliputram. Okay. So, this Pataliputram is uh, the modern Patna which is in Bihar and earlier it was called Magadha. See, Magadha is a place of great learning where even Nalanda University was existing at a point of time. Aryabhata says that I actually narrate the knowledge which was highly revered in this place and uh, so further Bhaskara says, Yema Manushruyate, this is what is being heard. So what is heard? I am he Swayam Bhuva Siddhantaha Kusumapura Nivasi Bhihi Kriti Bhihi Poojitaha Satswapi Paulisha Romaka Vasishta Saureshu. In fact, here we find reference to all the five Siddhantas which have been compiled in uh, Pancha Siddhantika of Varahimhira. So he says, Swayam Bhu means Brahma. So, Swayam Bhuva Siddhanta is Brahma Siddhanta. So, there have been other Siddhantas. So, he says Paulisha, Romaka, Vasishta, Saura. So, this Swayam Bhuva Siddhanta was considered to be superior and highly revered by these people. And uh, so, basing on Swayam Bhuva Siddhanta, Aryabhata has uh, presented his work. After the invocatory verse, the next verse basically presents the uh, notational places. So he says, Yekam dasha shatam cha sahasram tu ayuta niyate tatha prayutam kot yarbudan cha brindam sthanat sthanam dasha gunam syat. So the names of the various places. In fact, this is extremely essential for even deciphering the number which has been given by Aryabhata. So he basically tells the names. So Yekam dasha shatam cha sahasram. Sahasram is 100, ayuta niyate 10,000, niyuta is uh, so 1 lakh prayutam koti arbudam brindam sthanat sthanam so up to 10 to the power 9 the names of the powers of 10 has been listed. There is an interesting discussion made by Bhaskara at this point he says kaisham sthananam shakti. So what is so special about this? Shakti means a certain potential. So when you declare something may be something which has been devised by you, but it has a certain potential to convey some meaning to you, very uh, important meaning. So he asked this question, Kaisham Sthana, na, Sthana is basically place. So what is the potential that you have been associating with this and what purpose does it serve? He says, Yatu Yekam Rupam Dasham Shatam Sahasran Cha Bhavati Satyan Chaitasyam Sthana Shaktav Kraya Kaha Visheshta Kriya Bhajanaha Sihu. So primarily what he is trying to convey is, 
So, kraya kaha if you have to price something, so you can just place it in that place and thereby it conveys something. So, though it has been something which has been created by you, it serves a very useful purpose in the day to day transaction. So, that is the kind of discussion that uh, he presents there. Then he moves on to describe the fundamental operations. So, we start with uh, Varga and uh, he defines what does the term Varga mean. So, he says Vargaha Samachaturashraha Phalancha Tadishadvayasya Samvargaha. So, one is a certain geometrical representation. So, we have square and we have squaring. Squaring actually refers to the operation and uh, what is represented by this operation both are stated here in this string. Vargaha Samachaturashraha. So, Chaturashraha is a four sided figure. Samachaturashra refers to square. Phalamcha. Then he says Sadrishadvayasya Samvargaha. So, mathematically what does it represent? Samvarga refers to product. Varga is square, Samvarga is product. Sadrishadvaya means two equal quantities. So, the product of two equal quantities is what is represented by this and both are referred to as Varga. Okay. So, this is the definition of this. Then he also in the commentary Bhaskara poses an interesting question. When you say Samachatur Ashra, Ashra is basically side, Sama means equal. So, you can also think of a rhombus. So, rhombus is also an object which has four sides equal. Why does the word Varga not connote rhombus? So, can it also connote rhombus or not? So, is the question. He says, Naiva loke eva makara visistasya samachaturasya sakshetrasya samachaturasya samnya susiddha. See, in fact, this is a very important uh, statement in the sense that in order to understand the meaning of a particular word, so we have to go to the society. So, whatever sense in which it has been used by people is the sense of the word, and therefore, he says, eva makara visistasya means this particular shape, rhombus has been never referred to by people by this word and therefore, it does not connote rhombus, it has the potential only to connote square. Then Bhaskara also lists a few synonyms, Karani, Kritihi, Vargana, Yava, Karanam. So, all these are synonyms for square. Then I move on to describe this algorithm which has been presented by Aryabhata to extract square root. Varga refers to square, Varga Mula refers to square root. So, the verse goes like this Bhagam Hare the Vargat Nityam Vigunena Varga Mulena Vargat Varge Shudhe Labdham Sthanantare Mulam. So, Bhagam Hare the Avargat. Nityam Dvigunena Varga Mulena. In fact, yesterday while I discussed the Aryabhatan system of representing numbers, I said uh, Vargaksharani, Varge, Avarge, Avargaksharani, right. So, Varga can refer to the square, and uh, when we think of the powers of 10, so 10 to the power of 0, 1 is a square number, then 10 to the power of 2 is a square number. So, similarly in describing the operation which has to be done to extract the square root, he clearly states when you have a certain number which has been given to you, you have to first of all break that into two units. So, one is the Varga part, the other is the Avarga part. So, in understanding this verse, this has to be kept in mind. So, Bhagam Haretu Avargatu. Avarga here refers to that which is uh, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 3 and so on. So, this is called Avarga place. So, the Nityam Digunena Varga Mulena, Vargat Varge Shudhe, in Vargat Varge Shudhe when he says, so the first Varga has to be understood as the Varga which is the square of some number. Vargat Varge Shuddhe. Shuddhe means when it is subtracted. So, the process will be very clear, but I just try to 
make certain terminology clear before we show a certain example. Okay. So, let us uh, see this example now. So, here we have a number 55225 and uh, this has to be written down like this putting varga, avarga, varga, avarga, varga, avarga. Is clear? So, this is what he means by in the shloka vargat, varge, avargat, avarge and so on. And uh, the procedure to be adopted can be stated in a few steps, then we will move on to the example. So, in Bhaskara's commentary, what we find is bhagam haret, see bhagam haret, so he says bhajet, bhajet means divide, okay. When he says bhagam haret avargat, so whenever you encounter a certain avarga thing, so all that you need to do, you have to do a certain division. And whenever we find this vargat, so you move on to the varga place, all that you need to do is vargat varge shudhe, shudhe means you have to remove a certain square. So, we will see the algorithm and uh, the basis of the algorithm too. So, in fact, uh, Bhaskara very clearly says atra ganite vishamam sthanam vargaha. Okay. So, vishamam sthanam means when you have uh, a certain number, so 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, this vishamam sthanam, this odd place, so this is even place, so this is odd. So, all the odd places, so they are referred to as varga, so this is varga. So, all the even places are referred to as avarga. So, this is basically from the fact that this is 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 2. 10 to the power of 4 and so on. So, basically this has to be divided into 2. So, one is varga part, the other is avarga part. Why is this done? So, basically a single digit. So, if you take the square of it at most can be only 2 digits and therefore, so depending upon the number of digits in the number which has been presented, you first make a guess of how many digits will the square root have. Okay. So, this is this classification separate into 2, 2. So, atra ganite vishamam sthanam vargaha, then avargaha samam sthanam. So, the algorithm essentially has three steps. So, what it states is starting from the least significant digit, group the digits of the number into two. So, this is the first thing that needs to be done. This is what I was saying. So, from the least you just group them into two. Then from the remaining part, the most significant digit, so which constitutes the varga sthana. So, this is pretty evident. So, this is varga avarga gone, varga avarga. So, then this basically is varga sthana. So, whatever be the most significant digit, it can be 1 or it can be 2, so at most. So, that is just taken in the beginning, and uh, so which constitutes the varga sthana, subtract the maximum square that is possible. So, having done that, vargad varge shudhe. So, along with the remainder, so you bring down the next digit of the varga place. See, so this is varga sthana. Then, once you remove the maximum square that is possible for removing, for instance, when you have 5, so the maximum square that can be removed is 2 square. So, 1 will be remaining and 4 will be remaining. In the next step, you have to start your operation with 14. So, along with the remainder, bring down the next digit from the avarga, avarga place. This has to be divided by twice the varga mola. In fact, uh, this has been stated nityam vigunena varga mulena. Okay. Nityam vigunena, vigunena multiplied by 2. Varga mola is the varga mola that you have determined here at the first place. This has to be done at every stage, vigunena varga mulena. So, this varga mola, so at this stage if you deal with the first two digits or one digit, so you have to jot down the varga mola whatever you get. So, suppose you have 5, you should write 2. So, and in the next stage 
So, when you do certain operation, you will add one more digit to this and that should be considered as Vargamula at that stage. So, things will become clear when you look at the example. Vargad, Varge, Shuddhe, there are basically two operations, one is divide by twice that and then remove the square. These are the two operations which have to be repeated to extract the entire square root of the number. So, now we go to the example. So, let us take this number 5 5 2 2 5. So, we have grouped this Varga Varga, Varga Varga and then we have this Varga. So, the first thing that is to be done is remove the maximum square root that is possible. So, 2 square can be removed. So, you write 4 and then take the number 2 there. So, this is the Varga Mula Rekha. So, you just uh, keep it somewhere and uh, so 1 is the remainder here. Then bring down the next number from the Avarga place. What you have is 15. So, the operation that was stated is Dvigunena Varga Mulena Bhajetu. So, you have to divide by twice the Varga Mula. So, 2 times 2 at this stage what you have is only 2. So, 2 times 2 is 4. So, you have to divide by that. So, what you get is 3. So, 12 and the remainder is 3. Now, the next digit has to be brought down. 32 is the number that is available. So, Dvigunena Varga Mulena operation is over. So, the next operation that is to be done is Vargad Varge Shuddhe. So, Vargad Varge Shuddhe means because you have taken the Varga number down. So, Vargat Varge Shuddhe. So, you have to remove the square. The square of what? Square of the quotient that you obtained in the previous place. Okay. Therefore, you remove 9. So, Vargat Varge Shuddhe. So, what you have is 23 here and 23 you are bringing down a Varga. So, when the avarga place is brought down, so bhagam haretu avargatu dvigunena varga mulena. At this stage, the varga mula that you have is 23. Dvigunena varga mulena is 2 times 23. So, you have to divide by 46. Okay. So, dvigunena varga mulena haretu. So, what you get is 5. So, 230. And then the remainder is 2 here. So, then you bring down varga sthana. At this stage, so what you got as quotient was 5. So, Vargat Varge Shuddhe. So, you have to remove the square of this and 25 and the remainder is 0. So, this is basically the operation of extracting square root as described by Aryabhata. So, let us take one more example. So, we have to group into 2. So, 41 then uh, we have 94, we have 98 and what remains is 2. So, what can be extracted out is only 1 square, you remove that you write it 1 and then in the next step you bring down the Avarga number. So, 19 and twice the Dvigunena Varga Mulena at this stage. So, you have to take 2 into 1 divide by that. So, here you can actually have a greater number pulled out. But then keeping in mind that uh, the next step uh, you do not get a negative number. Okay. So, if you do that then you have to me you have to just revert back and then you will be able to do that. So, here so what you get is 58 and uh, so what has to be removed here is 7 square see Vargatu Varge Shuddhe remove 49 then again you do the same operation twice the Varga Mula 2 times 17. So, you can see that. So, in 3 steps you will be able to get the answer. Okay. So, this these are the 2 operations which have to be repeated. After describing the uh, extraction of square root, he moves on to describe cube cubing and uh, how to find cube root. Okay. So, this is the next operation. So, perhaps Aryabhata was the first person as we understand to clearly lay down the procedure for extracting cube root. Okay. So, very clearly laid down procedure. Defining what is cube, he says Sadrishatraya Samvargaha. See, as in the case of Sadrishatraya Samvarga is product. So, you have a quantity multiplied by 3 times. So, that gives what is called Ghanaha. Tatha similarly. So, geometrically what does it represent? So, a cube see that is what he says Dvada Shashrihi. 
Dwadashashri is an object which has 12 uh, not sides. So, it is the Ashri is the kind of line, see, uh, see. so edges. So, Dwadashashri is Syat, okay. so both of them have been nicely stated and uh, in fact, Ghanaha Vrindam Sadrishat Trayabhyasaha Iti Pariyayaha. So, this is what has been stated by Bhaskara. In fact, sometimes they use Vrindam Sadrishatraya Abhyasaha. Abhyasa is basically product. Sadrishatraya Abhyasaha is product of three quantities which are one and the same. So, this is what is Q. And in fact, what is interesting to note is so, this Aryabhata's definition of this cube stripping out of the so, geometrical thing. So, as a quantity you pro take the product price and you get this. So, this is a sort of abstraction. So, beyond what one sees this as a geometrical shape. So, this uh, cube root operation has been again beautifully and concisely described in one verse. So, he says aghanat bhajed dvitiyat trigunena ghanasya mula vargena Vargaha Tripurva Gunitaha Shodhyaha Prathamat Ghanascha Ghanat. So, this is the procedure for extracting cube root of a number. See, in the case of square root, so I said you have to break the number, given number into two two digits. So, you can easily guess that in the case of extracting cube root, you have to so break them as units of three. So, these uh, units of 3 have been assigned a certain nomenclature. So, there he called it as Varga and Avarga. So, here, so he uses 3 terms and uh, they are Ghana, Prathama Aghana and Dvitiya Aghana. <laughs> okay. So, Aghana one is sort of cube, the other is Prathama Aghana, Dvitiya Aghana. So, this is the name that he uses. So, Aghanat Bhajet Dvitiyat. So, he said Bhagam Hared Avargat. Similarly, he says Aghanat Bhajet Dvitiyat. So, this has to be understood as Dvitiyat Aghanat Bhajet. So, from the second Aghana you have to divide. Okay. So, what is to be done? Trigunena Ghanasya Mula Vargena. See, there he said twice the Varga Mula, here thrice. Okay. So, thrice of the ghanasya mula vargena means, so the varga of the ghanamula that you get at that stage. Okay. Then vargaha tripurva gunitaha shodhyaha. So, then shodhyaha is to be subtracted. So, what is to be subtracted? Vargaha tripurva gunitaha. So, 3 is number 3 and purva is the previous number. So, tripurva gunitaha means 3 times the previous number. So, you have to subtract. So, this has to be at the Prathamatu. So, Prathamatu means Prathamatu Aganatu. And uh, when you come to the Ghana place, Ghanascha Ghanat. So, there from the Varga place, you have to remove the Varga. Okay. So, here at the Ghana place, you have to remove the Ghana, the cube of something. Okay. So, all that will become clear the moment we take a certain example. But the terminology has to be very clear when we read the verse aghanat bhajet vitiyat trigunena ghanasya mula vargena vargaha tripurva gunitaha shodhyaha prathamat ghanascha ghanat. See this uh, understanding the algorithm will become quite evident the moment we understand that uh, the cube of a given number can at most have 3 n. Okay. If you have 3 digit number the square can at most have uh, 6 digits. So, here it can be at most 3 n and it can be it should be definitely greater than 3 n minus 2 and less than or equal to 3 n. So, with this in mind, so Aryabhata asks us to divide into groups of 3 and then carry out the operation. So, I will leave this, this is basically a translation of the verse and uh, the essential steps involved, see I just uh, show this and then I go back to this previous slide. 
see here we have this number 1771561. So, the grouping I think I have to put a comma here. So, here ghana, aghana 1, aghana 2, ghana, aghana 1, aghana 2 and whatever remains here should be considered as ghana. Okay. So, group of 3 starts from the least significant and uh, whatever remains whether it is 1, 2 or 3 that will be considered as ghana in the most significant place. So, in this example we have a ghana with one number and uh, the first thing that has to be see all that he says is yeah, this process has to be repeated. The process that he says is with ghana place you have to do one operation, with the dvitiya ghana place you have to do another operation, with the prathama ghana place you have to do the other operation and this operation has to be repeated till the number gets over. Okay. So, this is the process. In the case of square also he said. So, with reference to varga place you have to do an operation, with reference to arga avarga place you have to do the this operation has to be repeated and you will get the square root okay. as an algorithm. So, what are the steps involved? So, start from the units place. So, having grouped the digits of uh, the number into 3 from the remaining 1, 2 or 3 the most significant digits. So, the which is called ghanasthana there he called it vargasthana here it is called ghanasthana subtract the maximum cube that is possible. This is the first step that has to be done. So, this digit actually forms the most significant digit of the cube root. So, then along with the remainder bring down the next digit from the dvitiya ghana see. So, once you do this operation this dvitiya ghana this number has to be brought down dvitiya ghana. So, this has to be divided by thrice the square of the ghana mula obtained so far. In fact, if you look at the verse trigunena ghanasya mula vargena. Okay. So, trigunena multiplied by 3 ghanasya mula vargena see ghana mula vargena that is what it has to be understood. Okay. So, the ghana mula whatever you have written divide thrice the square of the ghana mula obtained so far. The quotient forms the next digit of the cube root. Okay. So, this is the operation. So, whatever quotient that we get here that forms the next place of the cube root. So, along with the remainder again the next digit prathama aghana has to be brought down and at this stage. So, all that he says is vargaha tripurva gunitaha vargaha. So, dri varga is the square of this. So, whatever we obtain tripurva gunitaha. So, 3 is 3 and purva is the previous number. Okay. So, in the cube root that you do whatever be the purva number the previous number. So, at this stage you get the second digit of the cube root and previously you have got one number. So, all that he says is 3 times the previous number and the square of this okay. vargaha tripurva gunitaha. So, that should be the uh, thing which has to be subtracted see. So, in the verse vargaha tripurva gunitaha shodhyaha. So, this is the prescription for prathama aghana. So, when you deal with the prathama aghana place, so this is the operation that has to be repeated prathamat ghanascha ghanat. So, this is all the uh, prescription and the process has to be repeated. Okay. Now, let us uh, look at this, this example. So, we have this ghana place 1. So, the maximum cube that can be removed is 1 cube, remove that we have 0. So, you place this 1 here and then the next digit the second aghana place that has to be brought down. So, here the operation that was stated was trigunena ghanasya mula vargena. So, 3 times so ghanasya mula varga. So, ghana mula varga. Okay. So, ghana mula is the cube root varga is the square of that ghana mula vargena. So, this has to be divided. When you divide this the quotient obtained is 2 whatever you get has to be taken as the next digit in this place and uh, the remainder is 1 here you bring down this and uh, this is first aghana and the operation is vargaha tri purva gunitaha. So, 3 times and purva number 1. So, at this stage <coughs> you get 5 as the remainder then you bring down the ghana place. See the moment you come to ghana place. So, you have to subtract the ghana ghana of the previous digit. So, 2 cube has to be removed from here and you remove. So, you get 43 here then again repeat the same operation see dhigunena varga mulena. Okay. 
so 3 times 12 square ok so you get 1 and then again see vargaha 1 square of the last cube that was determined 3 purva purva is 12 here now ok so at this stage when you got 2 the purva was 1 so when you move to 1 the purva is 12 and the 3 purva gunitaha so you will be able to get the cube root now let us see what is the rationale behind this procedure which has been given by Aryabhata? This is straight forward for us to see. So, consider a 3 digit number. So, this 3 digit number can be represented as a x square plus b x plus c, ok. x represents 10, fine. The cube of this number a x square plus b x plus c will have these terms. So, we can group them out. Is this clear? So, all that I have done is cube of this and then I have sort of grouped them ok as powers of x. So, the maximum thing is going to be so a cube and this will be multiplied by x to the power of 6 clear this is the largest term and the coefficient is going to be a cube. When you consider the next x to the power of uh, 5, so the coefficient will be 3 a square b. So, then when you do x power 4 this will be the coefficient x cube this will be the coefficient and this is how the cube of this number can be written down. When we look at the operation which has been given by Aryabhata, so all that he said was see when you have the maximum digit, so you have to remove the maximum cube that can be removed, so, oh yeah. so you subtract this, so this is what was the operation cube of the maximum digit has to be done. Then in the next stage all that he said was see trigunena ganasya moola vargena, gana moola vargena you have to divide. See we know the cube of this number and what we want to find out is basically a b c. So, at the first stage you determined a, then in order to determine b all that you have to do is you have to divide by 3 a square. So, that is the operation which he says see trigunena varga moolena. So, you have to do that. So, you will basically get b. At this stage, so what needs to be done is see you have to remove 3 a b square in order to get this ok. So, this is the basically the principle behind and this process has to be completely repeated. So, at this stage see if you have to get a c, so then you have to do this 3 times a b square. So, this is the basic uh, algebra which explains the process of extraction of cube root as described by Aryabhata. Okay. You can easily see here 3 times a square is the first thing, then trigunena see trigunena ganasya moola vargena this is one operation, the other operation is vargaha tripurva gunitaha shodhyaha, shodhyaha is to be subtracted. So, here trigunena ganasya moola vargena bhajet divide. The third operation is ganascha ganat again we have to understand it as shodhyaha. So, ganascha ganat shodhyaha one division and two subtraction. So, that is what you can see here. So, we have this uh, the subtraction at the ghana place, subtraction at this place in the prathama ghana place, in the dvitiya ghana place you have a division. So, this is repeated and once it is done you will be able to get the cube root of the given number ok. So, this has been repeated. So, at this stage since you have obtained a and b two things have been obtained. So, vargaha tripurva gunitaha, so purva is a plus b and varga is the c. So, vargaha tripurva gunitaha shodhyaha, so this is the operation which has been described. From a different view point if you look at the algorithm, presumes a thorough understanding of the decimal place value system. So, otherwise it is sim simply impossible for anybody to describe an operation in so systematically by which you will be able to extract the square root and it also sort of uh, uh, indicates as to how they have been able to do this sort of algebraic manipulation. So, if Aryabhata has to give an algorithm, so he should have analyzed so very clearly. So, the process which goes in cubing and uh, the way of extracting 
the cube root is the reverse process of it, which is what has been presented by Aryabhata in this beautiful verse. So, Aghanat Bhaje Dvitiyat Trigunena Ghanasya Mula Vargena Vargaha Tripurva Gunitaha Shodhyaha Prathamat Ghanasya Ghanat. So, more of Aryabhatiya in our next lecture. Thank you. <laughs>